Hello and welcome to Spotlight on Westminster. This will be the last Spotlight on Westminster of 2020. Over recent weeks, a number of Thames Valley MPs have been reacting to Robert Jenrick's announcement that the proposed mutant algorithm for calculating housing need, and that's how some Conservative MPs like to refer to it, will be revised. James Sunderland in Bracknell, Conservative, has said he welcomes the decision as local councils are best placed to decide housing priorities. And Greg Smith in Buckingham, also Conservative, said he's pleased the government has listened to concerns because too much countryside has been lost in his constituency. Following the news that the preferred bidder for Reading Jail pulled out of negotiations with the Ministry of Justice last month, Matt Rodder in Reading East, Labour, has reignited his calls for Reading Jail to be turned into an arts and heritage hub, claiming there's now a wonderful opportunity for a complete and utter rethink. He's been posting regularly on social media to announce the various celebrities that have rallied to the cause, and that's included Natalie Dormer, Sir Kenneth Branagh, and Dame Judi Dench, amongst others. He also wrote to the Prisons Minister at the end of November to suggest that Reading Jail should be considered as a World Heritage Site, given the links to Oscar Wilde and because of the burial place of King Henry I. Now, staying in Reading, Conservative MP for Reading West, Alex Sharma, who's a Secretary of State for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, set out the recently published Energy White Paper in Parliament. The White Paper has some important implications for developers in the Thames Valley, and if you want more information on this, we did an article about a month ago where we considered some of the detail. In Slough, Labour MP Tanmanjit Singh Desi said the government must fully commit to HS2 as the Midlands and the North are being shortchanged. He also met with the Commissioner of TfL to discuss Crossrail and said he's pleased that funding has been secured for this vital project. Now turning again to Buckinghamshire, in Aylesbury, Rob Butler and in Buckingham, Greg Smith asked the Minister for Regional Growth and Local Development on the 16th of November what assessment had been made of the devolution proposals put forward by Buckinghamshire Council. The proposals seek further devolution of powers directly to unitary level without forming a mayoral combined authority. The leader of Buckinghamshire Council, Councillor Tett, has claimed that these proposals could add £10 billion a year to the local economy by 2050. In response to the question by Rob Butler and Greg Smith, the minister, Luke Hall, simply stated that they intend to bring forward the devolution and local recovery white paper in due course. And briefly turning to other matters, Laura Farris in Newbury, Conservative, has said there are a thousand reasons why a Western Rail link between Reading and Heathrow is required. Robert Courts in Whitney, Conservative, celebrated construction commencing on Bewley Home Scheme in North Lee. And Cheryl Gillen, Chesham and Amersham Conservative, published an article on politics home, once again setting out the case for the Chilterns AOMB to be designated as a national park.